Hey, Don here. What you just heard is exactly what you're gonna learn right now. It's a sweet picking attitude that I really like because you cover all three minor and major three string sweep shapes here on the top three strings. So that makes it really handy to practice because then you won't leave anything out and end up playing just one shape over and over again. Plus it sounds pretty cool as well. I really like this progression. Uh, obviously you could come up with all kinds of different progressions using this stuff, but I really like this one in particular because it gives you that uh, sci-fi sound in my opinion. And all the progression is, is just a one minor chord, A minor going to B major. And I view this as a secondary dominant, uh, even though we're not really resolving it to the dominant here. So uh, we have A minor and B major. And if you go to my Patreon, you will have the tabs available there in Guitar Pro format, as well as some practice files for you to use. It's basically going to be a 16th note subdivision, 5 minute MP3, so you can really nail your timing as you practice this. And also it's kind of built in with a timer there, so you can just practice each section that I'm going to show you for 5 minutes and really focus on the articulation and getting a really clean and relaxed execution. And that's how you're going to improve your technique the quickest. So as the tabs are available for you, I'm going to cover this fairly quickly. Uh, and if you've seen some of my other videos here on three string sweeps, you probably will recognize these shapes anyway. But it's just that we put them in a new progression. Uh, and also the picking pattern is going to be slightly different here. But it's basically just this uh, six string, uh, sorry, six note sweep arpeggio pattern. But we add two notes on the top, which makes it a more of a 16th note feel. So we start here on the fifth fret and we have eight. Five, five, five. So that's our shape. So, and that's our pattern. So we're gonna go up, pull off, up, down, 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 up, pull off. So that's the pattern throughout the whole thing, except for the last arpeggio. But we'll get to that. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that's exactly how I pick it as well. It's just that I move up to the next arpeggio shape. So the next arpeggio shape will also be A minor. So we're gonna go to the second inversion here. Here's the root. Uh, sorry, the first inversion because we have the flat three as the lowest note. Now we have the fifth as the lowest note, so that's the second inversion. So we're gonna have 12, 8, 10, 9. So picking is gonna be the same. Up, pull off, up, down, 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 up, pull off. So if you connect those two. So that's the, basically the, the sort of blueprint for the whole thing. Uh, now it just comes down to changing to the different arpeggios. So the next arpeggio then is going to be the introduction of our B major here. So we have uh, 11, 7 on the high E string, and then 7 and 8. So same picking pattern, so I'm not going to go through that again. And then we move that up in the same way we did with A minor, but keeping it to B, mi B major. And this shape, a lot of people call this the D shape, because it's uh, basically like an open D chord. So we have 14, 11, 12, 11. So you connect those two. And then we're going to go back to A minor again. So we're going to go back to the higher shape, to the second inversion shape again. So. Now we're going to move up to the root position. So quite a big skip here. So we're going to go from 12, 8 to 17, 12. And then we have 13, 14. Whoops. So same idea. And then we're going to move back down to another familiar shape one we just did, the higher one uh, from the, the first B minor here. So, so again, 14, 11, 12, 11. And then we're, then we're going to move up to 
the root position of the B major, but now we're gonna go down a five string arpeggio. But of course you could practice this in the same way you practiced uh, this one. Just go between. So it's still the same three string arpeggio here, it's just that we add uh, three more notes here to make it a five string arpeggio. So again, if you want to practice this one uh, on its own, that's a good thing to do. I really encourage that. But as far as the, the as far as the etude goes, we're gonna end here. So and then we have a scale run just to finish things off. Uh, so basically, we have these pairs of arpeggios. And I suggest that you, you go through these in the way that we did, but you really want to make sure you know what you're doing. And again, in the tabs, you also have uh, the shapes above uh, the actual tablature, so you can see exactly what you're doing. And if you either use a guitar profile or you use the PDF, you can just zoom in and you can see exactly what uh, intervals we're playing as well, which I think is very important because that will, help your brain organize everything and also will be much easier to see similar things popping up again and again so it's not this new thing all the time for you once you know a shape you really know it and then it's just a matter of getting comfortable moving around the fretboard so that's a very important thing so that's why i included that stuff so after this arpeggio i'm ending it with an a harmonic minor scale leading up to the root and then just a bend uh, and the shape here is basically a three note per string scale uh, but we're starting on the root note here on the a string so we're gonna go 12 14 15 on uh, the a and d string and then we have the harmonic minor note here natural seventh uh, so we're gonna have 13 14 16 on the b string then your index finger is going to keep going on the 13th fret of B and E as well. So we're going to have 13, 15, 17, and then 13, 16, 17. So if you uh, keep your mind on the index finger here, it will be easier to visualize this shape. So once I reach this note here, I just, I just slide up to the 20th fret and bend that up the root and then I release it back down to the harmonic minor note again so and then bend it up again whoops there you go so be careful with, with the with the intonation here otherwise it will sound like crap so that's just to end this thing so it's not really anything you you need to add per se because it's more about uh, the arpeggios but if you want to play it uh, and have something to end it with go for it uh, and the actual pattern i'm playing here i'm just going up and then i go back and then i go back up again so So in the tabs that again are available on my Patreon, I put together a, a practice routine you can use to get this down a bit quicker. And it's mainly about uh, connecting each pair uh, of arpeggios. So not only what we're doing here and doing those two together, but we'll also go from this one So basically take each individual arpeggio shape and then we go between those two as its own exercise and we're going to end up with nine variations here including the the scale run as well so the scale run is basically divided into two like this it's the first part and then you have and then you're gonna work on that in the same way. So that's a very effective way of breaking down pretty much anything you're working on when it comes to a longer section. Instead of just playing the whole thing over and over again, which is also a really good thing to do. Uh, so don't skip that, but I think it's a very good way of practicing to go through whatever you're doing in this fashion, meaning basically just numbering each beat of uh, a long run or an etude like this. And then you go, uh, you make a, a loop out of each uh, 
two beats at a time. So you're going to loop between one and two, one and two, then you're going to loop between two and three, two and three, three and four, three and four, and so on until you cover the entire piece. Because then you've worked on all the connections and that will help you to not get stuck on a particular uh, shift that's giving you trouble. But I want you to pay attention to this. So go through each of, of the, the pairs like this. Uh, and then work more on those that you have trouble with. And this might seem, you know, obvious, but it's kind of easy to just spend an equal amount of time on everything. Uh, and that can be a really big waste of time in the long run. So initially, just keep it the same for all of it. But once you find that, oh, okay, so uh, pair number three and four and six and seven or whatever it might be, uh, whether it's this thing or something else you're trying this out on, uh, spend more time on that. So what I like to do when it comes to practicing is I use a timer and I most of the time I use a five minute time period because that's enough time to actually get enough reps in. So I'm not really focusing on the time per se, it's more about being able to get enough good reps. If I focus on the reps, I'm more aware of making as few mistakes as possible because I'm focusing on each rep, right? And I don't really care if, you know, if, if I get 120 reps or 200 reps or 70 reps, you know, depending on how large the section of music is that I'm practicing. But thinking of this in terms of reps instead of focusing on just sitting there for five minutes, uh, I find that makes my focus a bit better because I realize that I don't want to have, you know, if I do 100 reps, I want it to be 100 good reps. I don't want to have 70 good reps and then 30 kind of iffy ones. So hopefully that makes sense. But I tend to use five minute chunks of time when I practice stuff like this. And it's really helpful for my focus and also I can really relax and know that for the next five minutes, I'm not going to do anything else except whatever I'm decided to practice. And then I can just focus on that thing uh, to really exclude everything else. It's almost like a musical meditation. So I really try to focus and listen to everything I'm doing. Uh, and I, a lot of the time I close my eyes actually, because I find that you kind of get a sense of what your hands are doing anyway. But obviously if you have issues with, you know, flying fingers or, you know, two big motions in the right hand or whatever it might be, uh, feel free to check either hand out. But I think if you just relax and listen and do not exceed a tempo where you can't do that and, and, and get the quality that you want, uh, I think you'll find that as you start stacking these five minute periods uh, and again, focusing on the reps, getting all the good reps in, uh, you're going to find that your technique just gets better and better for, for each little five minute period that you spend. So, so for me, it's a really helpful and inspirational tool and if nothing else. It helps me relax more because I can't really do anything else for the next five minutes than what I'm doing. So I don't need to think about a hundred other things that I could possibly practice at that time. So if you had trouble with focus, uh, really do give that a try. And it's nothing magical about five minutes, but I think five minutes is enough to get, you know, a decent amount of good reps in. And it's not long enough to feel like it's a big, you know, big deal to sit down and, and, and have to practice a specific thing for, let's say, 15 minutes. Then it becomes more of a, oh, do I really want to spend that time on this thing? So I find that five minutes is a really good uh, sort of trade-off uh, when it comes to that. So if you want the tabs and the practice tracks and all that stuff, you can check that out on my Patreon. And as usual, if you have any questions, just post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you have some specific issues when it comes to cleaning up your sweeps, I would check out this video.